everybody. Welcome to another episode of Fandom Fights. Uh, we got a good one for you. Got another singles match for you. We've got me, Melissa going up against Dylan. Uh, they, they, they debuted this year, right? They did. They both did. It, we're in like October now, September. I don't know when this airs, but my brain is like, who knows when anything has happened anymore? We're at that part of the year where I'm like, this could have happened in 2020, and I wouldn't know. Uh, but I, I've known both of these people for a minute now, and so it feels like we've all been best friends forever. And uh, they're back in fandom fights and singles. And I'm really excited because I think both of these players um, both have a lot to prove, but also are just like super fun to be around and uh i just i just enjoy being um in calls with dylan and melissa and, and their managers that are here today um so i'm just looking forward to a fun time at the end of the day honestly but i think we're also in for a very good match between dylan and melissa nick uh what do you think about the match hi nick you're nick same nice you've been doing that lately i like it uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair. Uh, all right, let's get into the promos then. Uh, right now, what's up, lady? What's up? All right, fandom again. How you feel? Feeling pretty good. I've been watching a lot of fandom movies, and you have. I've seen your letterbox. It is the geekiest thing ever. Yeah, it's, yeah. I'm. It's pretty cha- cha- chaotic, honestly. <laughs> yeah, if it were a person, it would not be getting dates in high school. So, but uh, that doesn't matter now because we're adults and we're playing a fun game on the internet for no money. So, you ready to yeah. kick some ass? Yeah, let's do this. In the immortal words of uh, the Lord God, rock him. Fucking don't sweat the technique. Let's go. Okay, we got thirty seconds, so I'm going to be quick, Dylan. Uh, Melissa is a very nice person. So nice, in fact, uh, I'm sorry that she is putting herself through having to actually watch a lot of fandom films. I wouldn't w- want that for anyone. Um, with that being said, uh, I think you're going to you're gonna take this one today. It's nice to see you back and not playing a member of our own faction, of course. Um, it's true. I can, already hear the vi- I can already hear the violins, but do you have any uh, thoughts on the match? Yeah, I think it should be fun. Let's go. <laughs> All right, let's play. Enjoyable promos, Nick. Liked uh, everything I heard. Uh, Bill made me laugh really hard. Uh, and so did Scott, honestly. But Scott, also rude. I like fandom films. Jeez. And Bill, also, as much as he made me laugh, I like fandom films. I'm married. I got a date in high school. And I like Star Wars. Back off. Nick, what do you think? A bunch of adults playing a fun game on the internet for no money is probably the most accurate description of my entire life. Yeah, really. <laughs> The amount of time and energy we put into this. Correct. Zero dollars. Okay, anyway, let's get into it. Uh, Nick, how's round number one going to work? We lost money, if we're being honest. Anyway, okay. Absolutely. <laughs> How, who pays for the – yeah, we pay for the stream yard. We do. Round number one is going to work like this. <laughs> we're going to get ten questions in the realm of fandom fights. Uh, once the players hear the category – oh, wow, that's round three. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Leaving it in. I just did a match right before this. All right. You can get 10 questions around the found, uh, fandom fight. So, I have 15 seconds to write down your answer. At the end of 15 seconds, we will say pens down, at which point you will reveal your answer and say it aloud. Each correct answer is worth one point apiece. And should uh, any individual player get all 10 questions correct in round number one, they would receive a bonus question. Each player will have three repeats, one challenge for the entirety of the match. Players, any questions as we get into round number one? Nope. No. Good luck, Melissa. Good luck, Dylan. Great. And Tim, what is the first question? Oh. I don't okay. have it pulled up yet, so you should ask. Oh, gotcha. Time. Great. No, I'll start it up. The first question is going to come in the category of Pixar. Your question is, who directed Finding Nemo? Not to be confused with Finding Neverland, because that is not a fandom film. Not different, a different. fandom film. Yes. Tim, um, the computer died, and that's why I have to use my phone now. For the yep. question it means they're not always right at my fingertips. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We're going to start with uh, Dylan, Andrew Stanton, and Melissa. Oh, thank God, Andrew Stanton. <laughs> that is correct. We are one a piece as we get into the next question. Nick, are you prepared to read that question? I am, Tim. Your second question comes in the category of fandom quotes, and the question is. Which Star Trek film features the quote, in simpler language, Captain, they drafted me? Um, so in real time, when we're shooting this, uh, in T-minus 48 hours, Cody Newberry will be in my home 
Um, what do you think the first film I watch with Cody Newberry will be when he's here? If you had to guess. Oh, is, I mean, I think you told me already. What do you think? Welcome to... Welcome to Moose Sport. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, one. Down. I don't know if that's actually going to... Well, we will watch it. I don't know if it'll be first. Uh, Melissa. Um, I'm not sure, but I guess Star Trek Generations. And Dylan. Said Star Trek Nemesis. Both incorrect. We were looking for the OG, the motion picture. Ah. So I don't blame you for forgetting it. Anyway, uh, your next question is going to come in the category of Star Wars. How is Kylo Ren related to Darth Vader in the Star Wars series? So I sent you a Snapchat last night, but I went to Dave and Buster's uh, with one Tyler Butler. Uh, we had a few drinks. We got a little silly, and we played the uh, VR Star Wars game. Yeah. Uh, Darth Vader attacks you. Tyler freaked out. It was quite funny. Quite yeah. Funny. That game is stupid because all you yes. do is um, – Tim- uh, All you can do is, like, throw your lightsaber. What? Depends on you can shoot a gun, too. Uh, a blaster, if you will. Let's go to Dylan. Uh, he is his grandson. And Melissa. I said Matthew. Grandson is correct. Ah, well, Dylan will go up a point, making it two to one. What is next, Nick? Your next question comes in the category of Planet of the Apes. In 1968's Planet of the Apes, who does Taylor take with him on horseback at the end of the film? Have you ever ridden a horse? I have. It's not fun. No, it hurts. It hurts my bottom. It hurts my butt. <laughs> it hurts the boot. <laughs> Are you still drunk from Dave and Buster's or? No, I've just had a couple during logged it. It was a pleasurable evening. Gotcha. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Melissa. Nova. And Dylan. Nova. Both are correct. All right. We will move on to your next question, which is going to be in the category of YA. What part of her body does Bella get bitten by James on, forcing Edward to try and save her before she becomes a vampire in Twilight? Yeah. Nothing. I don't want to say it. <laughs> Is it because a word is capitalized? No, no, I was just making fun of the part that we literally could have taken out half that question, but you you love to make them as long and descriptive as possible, which I think the players appreciate. I, I'm I just think they do, Tim, because all I do is get made fun of for it. <laughs> I appreciate you and your Thank question you, writing. Two points to Melissa. Tommy, too. Let's go to Dill. The neck would make sense. Uh, Melissa. Is it her arm? It is her arm. So oh, Melissa, yeah. Melissa ties it up three to three. What's next, Nick? Your next question comes in the category of the MCU. And the question is, who plays Reed Richards in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness? This is a new movie. Was that too descriptive for you, Tim? No, it was pretty good, actually. Yeah. Pretty, pretty simple. It is a new movie. All right. Yeah. I saw this. How many times? In the theater? Yeah. You do the countdown. Let me think about this. Okay. Answer is in five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Five times. Um, Melissa. Nope. And Dylan. John Krasinski. John Krasinski is correct. So Dylan goes up four to three. As we get into your next question in the category of Middle Earth. What is the first name of Thorin's cousin who arrives to Erebor leading an army of dwarves in The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies? Um, this is a movie. Ooh, Damn, I... I'm going to spoil something for you, but everything we ask about is, is a movie. No. Sometimes we ask about who people are. Nope. Maybe some quotes. Three, 
Yeah, two, from movies. One, pens down. No way, you're lying. They're from books. Uh, let's go to uh, Dylan. Wrong character, but I didn't want a blank board, so I put Thror. That is a character. Uh, let's is... go to I hope this is a character. Dwalin? That also is a character, but you're both incorrect, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. It is Dane. Dane is the answer. Okay. So, uh, Nick, we move on to you. What is the next question? The next question comes in the category of Mission Impossible. Which Mission Impossible film features the IMF team trapping the main villain in a large glass box? Would you be part of the IMF team? It seems quite impossible. I mean... I'd be part of, like, the DMF. The dumb mission? Difficult mission. Ah, four. That was right. Three, two, yeah. one, pens down. Let's go to Melissa. I guess Mission Impossible, Fallout. And Dylan. I said the same thing. Both incorrect, unfortunately. <laughs> we were looking for the one before it, Rogue Nation. So we move on to your next question, which is the penultimate question in the category of the worlds of DC. Arthur is bullied as a child at what type of location in Boston at the beginning of Aquaman? Yes. Uh, are you excited for the sequel to this? Sure. I like this movie. Yeah. The MCU is pissing me off lately. So sure, bring on the worlds of DC. Why not? I mean, you know the worlds of DC also has TV shows, right? But three, two, one, pens down. Let's go. We're already a mess. Uh, let's go to Dylan. Set a beach. And Melissa. It's at a bar. Both incorrect. We're looking for an aquarium. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Okay. All right, Nick, what's the final question? Your final question comes in the category of alien versus predator. The question is, who sacrifices themselves by jumping into the predator's engine at the end of 2018's The Predator? Uh, were you alive in 2018? The fact that I thought about it for a second. Yeah, yes, Tim, I was. Thank you for asking. Damn. I just didn't know you until 2019, so I wasn't sure if, like... Did you assume I just, like, spawned? Yeah. Right before meeting you? Robert Parker went off into the well, the literal sunset, and so you just appeared out of nowhere after that. Yeah. So, have you yeah. ever seen The Watch? Yes, I have. What if it was, like, The Watch? Three, two, one. Pens down. That'd be cuckoo, as they say. Uh, let's go to Melissa. This is very much wrong, but I cannot think of any other character in Nebraska. Is it? Let's go to Dylan. Oddly enough, I couldn't remember what they uh, call him in the movie, so I put down his real name, Gaylord. Nebraska Gaylord is <laughs> what? Both, okay. both answers. Uh, so it is uh, five to four. That's what we call pulling an Andrew Barr. Pulling an Andrew Barr. Uh, so uh, I have the score of five to four, Nick. Is that what you have? That's what I have, Tim. Great. How's round number two going to work? Round number two is going to work like round this. Round two, and... Nick. Round two. Just give it round, yeah. round two is going to work like this. It is the wheel round. We have a wheel with eight fan of categories on it, as well as spinners and opponents' choice. Each player will get a spin at the wheel. If they like what they spin the first time, they can keep it. If not, they can choose to spin again. But they will be forced to keep what they spin the second time. Each player will get five ch questions in the chosen category, each worth two points apiece, unless they'd like to check down to multiple choice, in which case they will only be worth one. And be on the lookout as stealing is available in round number two. Your categories on the wheel today are horror icons, scores and soundtracks, Disney animation, DreamWorks, Alien vs. Predator, Marvel, Planet of the Apes, and the MCU. Take it away, Tim. All right, Dylan, you're in the lead. Do you want to spin first or defer to Melissa? Second. Second. Yeah. 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 Okay, we're bringing Bill. This the spin for Melissa. All right. Cool, let's go. Hey. <laughs> Good job with that Predator poll. I guess. I'm just so mad because I had grandson and they changed it to Matthew. Anyways. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Disney animation. Would you like to keep that or spin again? Um, I will keep that. You got it. Multiple. Take your time. You got your repeats. Fucking just go kill it at life. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Nick, do you want me to read these or are you going to read them? I'll read these. Okay, Melissa, yeah. are you Melissa, are you prepared for your questions in the category of Disney animation? I hope so. Great. 
Your first question. Which Disney animated film features a cast including Irene Bedard, David Ogden Steers, and Christian Bale? Pocahontas. That is correct for two points. Your second question. Oh, and the lead. Yes. Your second question. What type of transportation vehicle does Boone own in Raya and the Last Dragon? Multiple choice. Okay, your multiple choice options are is it A, a car, B, a wagon, C, a boat, or D, a train? Wagon. That is incorrect. Dylan Chance for the one point seal. Your options again are A, car, B, wagon, C, boat, D, train. A boat. Boat is correct for one point. All right, Melissa, your third question. How does Hercules ultimately kill the multi-headed Hydra in Hercules? Mm. I'm just nervous. I'm going to get it wrong, so multiple choice. Okay, your multiple choice options are, is it A, stabs it in the chest, B, cuts off all its heads, C, drowns it, or D, crushes it with giant rocks? Crushes it with rocks. D. That is correct for one point. Okay. And the lead again. And the lead, yes. Hey, Melissa, your penultimate question. What is the first name of the man who adopts Lewis in Meet the Robinsons? Multiple choice. All right. Your multiple choice options are is it A, Bill? B, Steve, C, Arnie, or D, Bud? I'll go with Bill. Uh, Bill is unfortunately incorrect. Still in chance for the one point seal. Your options again are A, Bill, B, Steve, C, Arnie, D, Bud. I'll go with Bud. Bud is correct for the one point seal. High game. All right, Melissa, your final question in Disney Animation. What type of weapon does Prince Philip use to kill Maleficent in Sleeping Beauty? A sword. That is correct for two more points. The lead again, and the end of Melissa's round number two. So Melissa gets her total up to nine with the steals. Dylan's at seven. Is that what you have? That's what I have, Tim. All right, we'll bring back up that wheel and Mr. Scarvy Dent uh, for the spin for Dylan. One's on opponent's choice. So we'll bring back in Mr. Cariola. Holy shit. Do you guys need the categories? Yeah, we would. Uh, uh, that'd be. Yes. Yeah, let's look at him again. Okay. Uh, I'm still thinking DreamWorks, but I don't know. Do you have any opinion? I don't. Give him what you hate. That's fine. Dream. I mean, I, I don't really hate it, but DreamWorks, yeah. I guess. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Okay, uh, then Dylan, I will be giving you your questions in DreamWorks Animation. Are you ready? Yep. Your, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Your first question. Which DreamWorks film features a husband and wife being reunited after years of being apart and singing a song and dancing together? Aww. Multiple choice. All right, your options are A, Shrek 2, B, How to Train Your Dragon 2, C, Mr. Peabody and Sherman, or D, Monsters vs. Aliens. Can I get a repeat of the question and the options, please? Yes, you can. That's your first repeat. Which DreamWorks film features a husband and wife being reunited after years of being apart and singing a song and dancing together? And the options, sir? Oh, sorry. And your options again are A, Shrek 2, B, How to Train Your Dragon 2, C, Mr. Peabody and Sherman, and D, Monsters vs. Aliens. Shrek 2? 
That is incorrect. Melissa chance for a one point steal. Is it A, Shrek 2, B, How to Train Your Dragon 2, C, Mr. Peabody and Sherman, or D, Monsters vs. Aliens? Is it C? It is not C. It is B, How to Train Your Dragon 2. Okay. All right, Dylan, your next question. Who voices Hal Stewart in Megamind? Jonah Hill. That is correct for two points and a tie game. Your next question. Who is revealed to have gained significant weight in the alternate timeline where Shrek was never born in Shrek Forever After? Puss in Boots. That is correct for two more points and the lead. Your next question. There are two types of sea creatures in the group known as the bad guys in the bad guys. One is a shark. What specifically is the other? Multiple choice. All right, your options are A, a seahorse, B, a piranha, C, a stingray, or D, a blowfish. Can you repeat the options? Yes, you can. Is it A, a seahorse, B, a piranha, C, a stingray, or D, a blowfish? Piranha. That is correct for one point. And your final question. What royal title does Proteus have in Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas? Multiple choice. All right. Is it A, Prince, B, Duke, C, King, or D, Lord? Duke. That is incorrect. Melissa, chance for a one-point steal. Is it A, Prince, B, Duke, C, King, D, Lord? Lord. That's also incorrect. We are looking for Prince. So at the end of round number two, I have Dylan in the lead 12 to nine. Is that what you have, Nick? That's what I have, Tim. Nick, now you get to explain round number three. Round number three is going to work like this. You're going to get 10 questions in the realm of fandom fights. 15 seconds. Oh, sorry. Wrong one. All right. Round number three. It's going to work like this. It is the betting round. You need five more questions in the realm of fandom fights. Once the players hear the category, they can bet anywhere between zero and two points on the question. If they get the question correct, they will gain those points. If they get the question incorrect, they will lose those points. We will play until someone is mathematically eliminated or we have reached the end of the match. Players, any questions as we get into round number three? Nope. No. Nope. All right. Then the first category you can bet points on is the Wizarding World. Let's get bets starting with Dylan. One. And Melissa. Two. Okay, your question in the category of the Wizarding World. In Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, Harry tricks Ron into believing he took liquid luck before what specific kind of event? Would you take liquid luck? Uh, no. Why? And Because... Tim? God. Five. Four, what? Three. Two. One. Pens down. I don't know why you got so upset about it. Let's go to Dylan. To the Quidditch finals? Let's go to Melissa. I just said Quidditch match. I think we can only accept Quidditch match. I do not think it is the finals. That's, I, yeah, I was worried about the when you said specific. Oh, Quidditch we just match. Needed more. Yeah, we just needed more than sporting event. We needed it was a Quidditch game, but Quidditch match is okay. correct. So Melissa will go up to eleven, and Dylan will lose one point and go down to eleven. So just like that, we're all tied up. Uh, Nick, what's the next category? The next category you can bet points on is Middle Earth. Let's get that starting with Melissa. Love this category. Terrible at the trivia. I'm gonna do zero. <laughs> Fair enough, uh, Dylan. <laughs> one. Okay. Uh, if Dylan hits this, he'll we get he will regain the lead. Sorry, uh, Nick, go ahead and read the question. The question is In the Fellowship of the Ring, 
Who knocks a skeleton down a well, attracting the attention of the goblins in Moria? Spooky place, that Moria. No. Just like my grandmother's house. Spooky. Really? Yeah. Why? What about it? She has a basement filled with stuff that she's gotten since 1940 to today, so... Just a lot of stuff down there. Kind of spooky. Bye. Like <laughs> Two. One. Pens down. Uh, we'll go to Melissa, who bet zero. Um, I guess Samwise. And Dylan. Sam. Both incorrect. We were looking for Pippin. Pippin. So just like that, Melissa has the lead 10 to 11 as we get into your third category, which is going to be the category of the MCU. All right, let's get back starting with Dylan. Let's try it again. One. And then Melissa. Zero. All right, here is your question in the category of the MCU. In Captain America, the first Avenger, what New York borough is Steve from? for the borough. <laughs> I came in through. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Melissa. I guessed Queens. And Dylan. I really hate the betting round. I said Brooklyn. Brooklyn is correct. So we are all tied up again. 11 11 as we get into the penultimate category of the round. And Nick, what is it? It is the category of scores and soundtracks. Let's get that started with Melissa. One. Okay, and Dylan. <laughs> Zero. Oh, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Nick, what's, the, what's the question? Your question is. Who composed the score for Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home? (laughs) Melissa, if we could get both hands on. I know you're just writing, but yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry. No, you're good. I was just panicking. (laughs) Oh, you're good. You're good. You're good. Don't worry about it. Oh, boy. This has been a good match. This is fun. (laughs) I told you it was going to be fun. (laughs) Five. Or, repeat. All right, that's Melissa's first repeat. Question again. Who composed the score for Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home? You recently were away. Yeah. How was your... Lots of work. A little bit of uh, fun in the middle there. Well, I was going to ask about your voyage home, but... Um, thanks. Voyage Home sucked. Lots of traffic. was n- not a good time. Oh, okay. Four, I don't know. Three. <laughs> One. That's down. Sorry. That was just funny. Uh, Melissa? Jerry Goldsman? And Dylan? Leonard Rosenman? Leonard Rosenman is uh-huh. So here's where we're at. Dylan is up again. 11 to 10. <laughs> Popular score in this round. Uh, so here's what's going to happen. We got one category remaining. We'll see what happens after we get the bets. But the category is Pixar. Let's get bets starting with Dylan. Two. I'm shocked. Uh, Melissa. Two. Also shook. Okay. Here's the situation. If Dylan and Melissa both hit or both miss, Dylan will win. But if Melissa hits while Dylan misses, Melissa will win. So uh, here is your question in the category of Pixar. Which Pixar film features a shotgun wielding old lady? Wow. I feel like Coho. This is intense. <laughs> he dyed his hair red once. Yeah. Why? It was very bright off the screen. Whoa. Five. Four. Repeat. Melissa's second repeat. 
Which Pixar film features a shotgun wielding old lady? It's like a synonym for intense. We gotta like change up our verbiage when it's like this. Crazy. Um, um, genius. Cuckoo. Now, uh, you're just, now you're just saying words. Wow. That's not really what I asked. Whoa. Five, <laughs> four, repeat. three. Melissa's final repeat. <laughs> Which Pixar film features a shotgun wielding old lady? Impassioned? Kind of. Um, what was it? Impassioned? Yeah. Kind of. Um, yeah, I mean, there's lots of different words. Of, like, like uh, it edge of your seat, kind of, you know? Whoa! Tim, those, you're just. <laughs> We got another one of these after this. Five. Four, that sounds great. Two. Up. One. Hands down. We'll start with Melissa. I didn't have anything. Dylan. I just said Coco. <laughs> and your winner, Dylan. Uh, the answer was Ratatouille. Ratatouille was the uh, answer. Old lady what? shoots that mouse with a shotgun. Uh, Nick, final score. They both missed, obviously, the uh, final score of 9-8. to eight. But I don't think that quite sums up the match because a lot of fun here. Dylan got a bad draw in round number two. Melissa uh, got a category that she liked, um, but just a couple of questions that, you know, were, she was just super close on. So, um, But they both played round three super strategically and made it a really close game all the way up until the end. What did you think? It was a very close game. Uh, I think they got a little unlucky in round three because most of them bet when they didn't hit and then hit when they didn't bet. Um, but tis the nature of the game. Uh, it still led to a very exciting one. Uh, I think they both did very well in rounds one and two. Uh, and you were right, Tim. This was a fun one. I quite enjoyed it. Yeah. Why don't we start post-match interviews, starting with Melissa. Sounds like a plan. Melissa, welcome back. Great job making it all the way to the end. Of, oh, by Tim. Making it all the way to the end of round number three uh in a very very fun match uh dylan proving himself to be a great uh teams player this was only his third match uh in singles uh you yourself are pr proving yourself to be a great teams player as well uh with anthony in, in recent matches so uh you both were sort of on a high and you took him to the very end i think this was a very evenly matched uh competition today and even though you didn't win uh you still impressed quite a few people uh so how are you feeling eh. I felt like I could have done better, um, but it's fine. <laughs> you, you got to the last question. Yeah, and I should have bet zero on that scores and soundtracks round. And I also yeah. changed the answer to the wrong answer in that Star Wars you question in the first round. You can stuff your sorries in a sack, <laughs> as uh, one George Cassandra used to say. It's fucking it. Who cares? It's fine. It happens. You play yeah. great. I mean, you know, huh. Good time. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, yeah. Evenly matched. Great. Yeah. That was a good dude. I and mean, you're not going to complain. You know, you got to lose somebody. I'm glad it's somebody of quality. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You'll be uh, back. Melissa, you, you, you fucking we're gonna kill it. It's great. Yeah. Good speaking time. of, Melissa, we love having you here, uh, as I tell you every time. Uh, <laughs> this, this is the end of uh, both your, you and your and Dylan's uh, singles career for this season. Um, so when we have you back next year, is there anyone you're looking to go up against? Um, I can't really think of anyone, but I'm down we'll to play. If you year. if you want to play, I hear somebody's making their their singles debut next year. If you want to, oh. if you want to, if you want an easy target, so okay, sure. Yeah, I mean we find the MC plays each other enough. So. True. Maybe yeah. Scott will come out of retirement and see if he can get that fucking win streak going to two. Scott, let's Harvey, go, Scott. Undefeated <laughs> and a player. Um, but Melissa, <laughs> great job. Uh, as I said, we love having you. We'll definitely see you again. Uh, next year, or possibly in the teams tournament as we continue on. You, we haven't shot your round one match yet, but we don't know how it went, but you could still be playing again, so we don't know. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll keep an eye on that, and we'll see you next time, Melissa. Great job. Uh, as we bring in our winner today, Mr. Dylan Vanthine. Dylan, uh, great job. As I said, heated, intense match. You and Melissa going <laughs> shot for shot, um, playing very well, sort of matching each other throughout uh, the first two rounds, and really in round number three all the way to the end. Uh, there, as I said, um, 
unlucky round three for both of you. I think had either of you done things a little differently, the match might have ended earlier, but it wound up working uh, out in your favor. So, Dylan, uh, how are you feeling? This is your second win. You now have a positive record uh, in your rookie season, so that must be a pretty good feeling. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. It's uh, Yeah, I feel like I played a very sloppy game today. Not I feel like I did play a very sloppy game, but yeah, I, it was yeah bad luck for both of us. I feel like me and Melissa, but so yeah, I don't know. But I'm happy to get the win. Dylan played well under the circumstances. You know, you hit opponent's choice. Obviously, it wasn't what we wanted in round two, and then I don't think we got much of what we wanted in round three either, as far as the the categories that came up. But you know, we weathered the storm. I definitely hate those matches um, where you know, which you kind of just throw your hands up as far as what to actually bet, but. Um, we came out one point on top at the end, which I guess yeah. is all that matters. So, um, yeah, good match to Melissa, but I'm, I'm glad that Dylan was able to get another win. And also, if there are any accountants watching, it seems like Multiplex uh, is operating at a, at a loss right now. So, um, it might need some help. Uh, <laughs> oh, in the red. But <laughs> that's okay. Um, we're opening up a legal division as well eventually, Scott. So we'll give you a call. Uh, Dylan, as I said, this is uh, the end of your singles run for this year. Uh, very good rookie season uh, in singles. We still might see you back in teams. Same sort of situation with Melissa. You're in the teams tournament. Your round one match has already happened, but we haven't shot yet. So we don't know um, if you have continued on or not. But regardless, we will see you next year. Is there anyone you are looking to face off against uh, when, when you come back next year? Uh, well, I'm going to try to hopefully get better at this for next year. But, uh, yeah, I mean, for now, it's like, you know, if you need anyone who has, like, is just above 500 that you want to just give them a win, basically, I'm here. So. <laughs> All right. All right. I appreciate it. I'll do my best. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Congrats on the win. Tim, take us home. Yeah, uh, really fun match. Like I said, I thought it would be from the beginning. I just I love the energy from Melissa and Dylan, and honestly Scott and Bill too. They they just they bring a lot of fun to the table. So this was a really fun match to be a part of, and I uh, I'm glad we got to have it. So I want to thank Dylan and Bill and Melissa and Scott. Thank you guys so much uh, for being. I yeah, they I went across on how they are on the stream yard. I'm sorry, uh, but thank you guys for being here. Thank you to Nick for writing this one. I've been Tim. We'll see you next time with the next match. We are so glad you came. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye-bye. And again, that's the hero gig. Part of the journey is the end. Goodbye, old friend. Giddy has to go.